Hello everyone, welcome to Pathfinder Kingmaker Character Creation Guide for the Magus. So the Magus is a class that mixes magic and melee or ranged combat. There's a lot of different types of magi. You can be charisma based, intelligence based, dexterity based, strength based, melee or ranged. There are four types of magi, the regular one, the eldritch scion, the sword saint and the eldritch archer. Regular magus is a prepared caster. So you need to pick how many times you will use each spell per day. The Eldritch Scion is a spontaneous caster, so you know a limited amount of spells, but you can pick freely from them each day. And the Eldritch Scion is charisma based instead of intelligence based. The Sword Saint offers some of its magical abilities to become better with melee weapons. The Eldritch Archer cannot channel magic through melee weapons, he can rather channel magic through his bow. Let's explain some of his basic abilities. Arcane Pool is a pool of points that the Magus can use to increase his weapon's magical abilities. So increases his to hit chance and damage in the beginning, and later on he can give his weapon special effects. Spell Combat makes the Magus able to cast spells in one hand and use a normal weapon like sword, rapier, hand axe, anything like that in his other hand. He has a minus two to hit, but most of the time it's still worth it. And at level 2, you would get Spell Strike, which means when you cast a spell, you can strike the spell through your weapon if it had a range of touch if you're an Eldritch Archer. This ability would be for ranged touch attacks instead of melee touch attacks. These are the basic abilities that the Magus gets and the class is built around. Eldritch Scion gets a Bloodline and gets Eldritch Pool instead of Arcane Pool. It works the same as the Arcane Pool, so it's no, no different there and still spell strike. You need to pick your bloodline. So the ones I recommend is Draconic, Draconic, Blue and Bronze because they have Lightning as their special Draconic ability. You get plus one damage per die on your Lightning spells and melee ma maguses will use Shocking Grasp a lot or that's the standard magus spell and it's a Lightning spell. So you get a lot of use from it, and Lightning is one of the least common resistant types. I would also recommend Arcane, because it gives you higher DC when you use metamagic feats, and it gives you bonuses on concentration checks, which helps you cut spells in melee combat without the enemy being able to attack back. You can also pick from a bonded object or a familiar. The bonded object will give you more spells, and the familiar will give you pretty much the bonus of a feat, and you will have a nice pet running around. The sword saint gets a chosen weapon, so he picks a weapon, you get proficient with it, and you get weapon focus with that weapon. I recommend rapier, it has a great crit chance, 18 to 20, and it's a one-handed piercing weapon. That's important, because then you can get weapon finesse and slashing grace later on. So you have dex to damage and dex to hit. It also gives you canny defense, which lets you use your int to a maximum of your level as a bonus to armor class, but you can't use armor. The arcane archer gets the same stuff as the normal magus, except for spell combat and range spell strike. So let's take a look at races. Humans are always good. They give you one extra feat, one extra skill point per level, and plus two to any one stat of your choice. Great choice all around. They make great sword saints because you can get slashing grace at level one, but we work great with Magus, Eldritch Scion, Sword Saint, and Eldritch Archer. Elf is also a good choice for dex based magi because they get plus two dex and plus two intelligence. Dwarves are pretty bad as magi, but they don't have penalties in key stats except if you play an Eldritch Scion, but I would not recommend it. Gnomes might be good if you play an Eldritch Scion because they have a plus two on their charisma, but still not high on the recommendation list. I would say they're pretty poor magi. Halfling though might be good. Eldritch Scions that uses 
the dex build. Because we have plus two dex, which you want, and we have plus two charisma, which you want. And if you play to level five, you could get dex to damage and to hit. After that, the halfling is pretty good, because when you're small, like a halfling, you get plus one AC and plus one to hit with your attacks. But you take a minus, on average, one to your damage rolls from the smaller size on your weapons. And you can't get reach from drinking an enlarged person potion and similar. But if you're a dex build, you probably don't want enlarged person because it will decrease your dexterity. Half elf and half orc works great as any type of magus because they have a floating bonus. But I would say that they are worse than humans. The last race, Asimar has this special thing. So you need to pick a type of Asimar you are. Some of these are better and worse for different things, like the Angelkin gets plus two to strength and charisma. So if you're making a Elder Scion that is strength based, this is a great race for you. If you're making an Elder Scion that's dexterity based, Muse Touched are great because they get a plus two on dexterity and charisma. The other ones are not as good as those two. So for ability scores, the different builds wants to have different ability scores. So here I have a few different options that I created that you could use for builds. So first we have here, normal magus and a strength build. You could of course change stuff, but most of the time you want to have the highest strength and high intelligence. But if I had to pick on normal magus, I would pick higher strength than intelligence. But 16 and 16 seems pretty good to me. If you make a dex build, you can use these ones or if you get the magus later on i would recommend dropping down this 12 to 7 and use those stats the reason for this is you will not do any damage with your character at low levels if you have minus 2 to damage from your terrible terrible strength at 7. when you have it at 12 you will at least get plus 1 and it will also help you carry stuff so it's a better to have it more rounded like this in the early game. And if you get the Magus later, use something more statted like this. On an Elder Scion, you should switch out your intelligence for your charisma or your Sha. And you could of course switch out wisdom and int, but I like to not give myself penalties on will saves. But this will make your character only have one skill point. So that can definitely be a problem. You could also make a dex build as an Elder Scoundrel. I think this would work well as a Muse Touched Asmar and a Halfling because they get bonuses on Charisma and Dexterity. So you can start with two 18s. Sword Saint. I would use this stat line if I'm playing a human because then I can get Slashing Grace at level 1 and have Dex to damage and Dex to hit at level 1. Otherwise, you would need to wait to level 3 to get that feat as a sword saint, and you might not want to wait that long, then I would use this stat line. And with an Eldritch Archer, I would just use this stat line. Really high dex, high strength, or at least pretty high strength, and okay intelligence compared to, to the rest of the builds. And the reason for this is that the Eldritch Archer is primarily a archer and not a caster. So let's pick out the stats for a sword saint. Let's go with 7, and then dexterity we want 18 and 11 in wisdom because I had one point over and I couldn't do anything with it. I also have my racial bonus which I will put in dexterity to give it a plus two. You want to have your racial bonuses in your highest stats. So to have a stat bonus in dexterity or intelligence. So an elf would be really good here because it would give plus two dexterity and at intelligence, but a minus two constitution. I don't think any of the skills are required for a magus, so I won't mention anything about them. So here we can pick feats. For a dex build, you should pick weapon finesse, so you can use your dexterity to hit. It's required. Later on, you want to pick weapon focus, which my sword saint gets free. And after that, you want to get slashing grace, which lets you use dexterity for damage rolls. So I picked weapon finesse, and then to get the feat I want, I need weapon focus. And then I need to click here, and then go to the weapon I want. I can use a scimitar, 
which is this weapon. It's a weapon that has an 18 to 20 crit chance. You could also use a rapier. So select scimitar now, and then I will get slashing grace here. It will give me dexterity to damage, and I can treat my weapon as a piercing weapon for all things. If you pick rapier, you will get fencing grace. That makes you able to use dexterity instead of strength modifier on your damage rolls. And of course you need to pick your weapon. If you play a strength magus, I would recommend combat casting, so you can cast in melee combat more easily, or dodge to increase your AC, or toughness to increase your HP by 3, so you can survive longer. This is one of the big differences between a dex build and a strength build. The strength build will have up to 3 feet more to use on stuff than the dexterity build. So that's a big plus for the strength build. You should also look at combat reflexes, because all magi have at least okay dexterity, and combat reflexes let you make more than one attack of opportunity per round, and attacks of opportunity are at your highest base stack bonus, they have no penalties from iterative attacks or anything like that, so they have a good chance of hitting, and they're th three extra attacks, so really good feat. A strength build could get it first, but dexterity builds should get other stuff before. Weapon finesse and then slashing grace or fencing grace. Arcane strike is a good option at higher levels if you don't use a lot of swift actions. Most magi builds uses a lot of swift actions. If you're an archer, there's two feats you need to pick. Point blank shot. Increase your hit chance and damage to enemies within 30 feet. And then there's Precise Shot. It removes the minus 4 penalty on shooting into melee combat. It's extremely needed for all archers. So let's talk about the spells. Color Spray is an extremely strong low level spell. Shield is a spell that's good throughout the game. It gives you a plus 4 shield bonus. And you can't use a shield as a magus. So plus 4 shield bonus, great, because it doesn't count as you're wearing a shield. Shock, shocking Grasp is your regular attack spell that most magi uses in melee combat. In the pen and paper game, it gives you a plus 4 on attack rolls versus enemies that use metal armor. Don't know if it has that effect and doesn't say it here, because they don't have the modifier for like the small races. Snowball, if you're an Eldritch Archer, this is the spell you will use instead of Shocking Grasp. And it's really, really good because it staggers. Staggered is a condition that removes the ability to make acts, some types of acts, and limits what a person can do in a turn. So in this game, it reduces like the time the character has in his six second turn. So it's really, really good. True Strike, nice spell if you want something to hit. If you want to trip a giant, or if you want something to hit. In the right circumstance, this spell is really good, and it's especially good for Magi, because they can use it on the same turn as they attack. No other caster can do that in the game right now. Vanish, it could save your life. So that's always good to know. So Magus also have some cantrips that I can't look at in the editor. An Eldritch Archer wants to use Acid Splash or Ray of Frost because they, they are attack roll spells. A melee Magus wants to use Touch of Fatigue to get an extra free attack on his turn at level 2. This is my guide to how to build a Magus in Pathfinder Kingmaker. I hope you enjoyed this video.